We are just outside of the Sheet Metal Workers Local 73 Journeyman and Apprentice Training Center in Bellwood, Illinois, home of the duct bubble machine. The bubble machine was built so we can see how air flows through a duct system using a variety of fittings employed in commercial HVAC duct systems. Helium is used to create the bubbles. The helium-filled bubbles are injected into the airstream at the fan intake and mark the path of the airflow across the width and through the length of the entire duct system. Where bubbles spin, are stagnant, or appear to be moving erratically, the airstream is unstable, turbulent. That visual turbulence is a proxy for duct pressure loss. The bubble machine demonstrates airflow in a rectangular duct. However, most of the principles demonstrated for rectangular ducts also apply to round duct and similar round duct fittings. Smooth airflow or turbulence would be similar. These drawings illustrate the fitting types that will be demonstrated and discussed within this video presentation. The drawings were taken from the appendix of SMACNA's HVAC System Duct Design Manual. The data associated with each fitting provides loss coefficient values that can be used to develop the pressure loss contribution of each fitting. The HVAC Systems Duct Design Manual presents methods and procedures to design HVAC air duct distribution systems. In addition to the basic engineering guidelines for the sizing of HVAC ductwork systems, the manual also provides related information on materials, relative economics of duct system types, duct system layout and sizing, pressure losses, fan selection, duct leakage, acoustic considerations, and testing, adjusting, and balancing guidance. Duct systems use fittings to bypass obstacles, turn corners, branch large main ducts into smaller multiple branch ducts, and so on. All of this is done to distribute air throughout a building in as cost-effective a manner as possible, both from a material standpoint, initial cost, and from an energy efficiency perspective, resistance to airflow and fan power requirements, the cost of operation. All of the fittings illustrated in this video represent choices. Some are the best available choices. Others are bad choices that must be used due to poor design planning and coordination with the space requirements of other trades, or the consequences of using poorly constructed fittings, like these reducing square throat elbows. The one on the right has turning vanes properly oriented, like the one you will see demonstrated in the video, but the one on the left has turning vanes improperly oriented that misalign airflow and add considerable pressure loss. The growing emphasis on energy conservation has increased the need to pay more careful attention to duct pressure and frictional losses. This is because duct resistance to airflow and higher operating pressures both contribute to increases in the fan power requirements. As the fan power is increased, more energy is consumed by the overall HVAC system. In commercial HVAC systems, the fan energy has historically been as much as 40% of the total overall building energy consumed. This high energy use is partly due to the fact that most HVAC systems use the same duct system for ventilation air to maintain indoor air quality as well as for heating and cooling. Since ventilation requirements are established by code, the fans and systems that provide that air cannot be turned off whenever the building is occupied. The other contributor to high energy use is that as the available space for mechanical components is reduced, duct system pressures have increased in order to convey more conditioned air to the space and occupants through tight turning fittings. This comes at the expense of higher fan requirements. Now let's begin our trip down the bubble machine's duct system. This first turbulence is near the discharge of the fan where the bubbles are moving erratically. This illustrates a phenomenon called system effect near the fan. System effect is an undesirable pressure loss that cannot be accurately calculated and is often caused by trying to make turns too quickly near the fan. 
Mechanical rooms that are too small are often the culprit. The bubbles flow through a section of straight duct. Straight duct offers the least resistance to airflow, as illustrated by the lack of air turbulence, and it is also the least expensive to construct. Along the duct, pitot tubes are inserted in the airstream to measure pressure, and those pressure readings are displayed on gauges. One gauge is reading pressure in the main duct, and the other the pressure in the branch, or in the case of fittings, further up the duct from the fitting. As this type of damper is opened into the main duct's airstream, air is literally scooped into the branch duct. While some air balancer contractors have noted that this type of damper makes duct balancing easier, note how bubbles in the area downstream of the induct damper are turbulent and airflow is severely restricted. The turbulent airflow behind the damper is an illustrative proxy for duct system pressure loss. In fact, throughout this video where turbulent or stagnant air patterns are observed, that is an indication that airflow is suboptimal. From a duct design perspective, it is better to specify that dampers be installed in the branch ducts where air volume can be controlled without introducing interference into the airflow of the main duct. One additional design point to consider is that if the damper is close to the main duct, the axis of the damper blade should be parallel to airflow. Otherwise, the scoop effect may cause a very small movement of the damper blade to impose a large difference on airflow changes, which makes air balancing problematic and less precise. Note how the bubbles quickly fill the entire duct downstream of the turning vanes in an even, non-turbulent flow. Turning vanes can be constructed as single or double thickness vanes. Single thickness vanes present a slightly lower pressure loss to the airflow. However, double thickness vanes are more rigid, are less likely to rattle, especially in a high velocity duct system, and they provide more structural integrity to the fitting. So the choice of turning vane type is a construction issue that should be left to the duct constructor. Square throat elbows are typically used where space constraints make the use and installation of radius throat elbows difficult or impractical. When the turning vanes are removed from the square throat elbow, turbulence can be clearly seen in both corners of the fitting because the fixture that so carefully guided the path of the airflow has been removed. Again, turbulence and stagnant air movement is a visual proxy for pressure loss. The air appears to actually run into the duct wall without the aid of the turning vanes. The bubbles illustrate that the air has to move an appreciable distance up the branch duct before smooth airflow is established. While turning vanes are typically used in both main and branch duct square throat elbows, turning vanes are not used in low velocity distribution ducts, often referred to as stack heads. This shows the airflow path up a branch duct that has a simple 45 degree takeoff fitting. Because the airstream is able to bend along the 45-degree angle into the straight branch duct, turbulence is not significant. This shows the airflow path up a branch duct that has a straight takeoff fitting. More turbulence is noticeable up the branch, but it can be better observed when the two views are placed simultaneously side by side. Using this viewing aid, the more turbulent airflow is clearly visible compared to the better flow provided by the 45-degree takeoff 
due to the angled lead-in from the main to the branch duct. Again, more turbulence equates to higher overall duct pressure loss. This wide shot shows a straight eccentric reducer, a straight duct section, and a long radius elbow. The reducer changes dimensions over a fairly long length so that little turbulence is introduced. Note the smooth airflow pattern. The reducer is easily within the recommendations for offsets and transitions in the SMACNA's HVAC duct construction standard. The long radius elbow is so designated because the throat has a large radius that provides a low resistance path for airflow. This wide shot shows the same reducer and straight duct section, but this time a short radius elbow is used to turn the airstream 90 degrees into the branch duct. While both radius elbows display similar flow characteristics, a difference is discernible in the downstream air turbulence when the two are shown side by side. Typically, the longer the turning radius, the lower the pressure loss. The trade-off is that the cost to construct increases as the elbow's radius increases and more space is required as the fitting's radius increases. Generally, the duct designer would specify the long radius fittings, either using specific radius dimensions or via a width-to-turn ratio as part of an effort to reduce overall duct system pressure loss. A hybrid between a square throat elbow with turning veins and a radius elbow is an elbow with splitter veins. This type of elbow presents the lowest pressure loss to the duct system, which can be seen in the smooth airflow paths and the lowest pressure losses to the duct system and through the fitting. The splitter vein elbow, illustrated here, has a single splitter, but design tables that list up to three splitters are shown in SMACNA's HVAC duct construction standard. Elbows with splitter veins are usually applied to high-velocity duct systems, near fans, to better direct airflow swirl into a fan intake, or where the lowest duct pressure losses possible are desired. These fittings require the most time to construct, are the most costly of the elbow fittings, and would typically be used in situations where multiple benefits are conveyed by its use or very low pressure losses are desired. Where these are desired, they should be specified by the duct designer, including the radius and number of splitter veins. The airflow pressure losses can be calculated using fitting tables found in SMACNA's HVAC duct design manual. This table shows the loss coefficient, which is a part of the pressure loss function formula. However, air velocity plays a major factor in duct pressure loss, and the slower the air velocity, the lower the potential energy savings are to offset the higher construction costs of these types of fittings. That concludes our video of the duct bubble machine. We hope that the principles illustrated will be considered as building designers and HVAC duct system designers plan and engineer HVAC duct systems. With planning and coordination, it is possible to have reasonable first cost and lower operating cost if both the space and the energy requirements are considered using an integrated approach.